All right, so welcome back. And on this one, we are going to talk about the delay number four. Now, if you don't understand delays or you're just, uh, you know, uh, you're starting on this and you don't understand much what happens with the delay, go to the other video I have on my channel for the delay number one and delay number two of Bitwig. Once you get that and you understand that, you can come here and watch this because uh, there are some things I'm not going to explain because I'm assuming that you have a little bit of experience with this. Uh, I mean, the obvious, for example, the mix control, I believe I don't need to explain the mix and the global the gain, which is, you know, the gain, right? So, okay. So I know that this delay looks very challenging, but it's really, really not that challenging at all. So I'm going to go and bring the number one and just show you the difference. So on the number one, of course, we get the feed, the mix, we get a cut, we get the, the beat temp, the beat delay, and then a feedback. So if we go, you know, right here, we get a lot of knobs and it looks very weird. So if we divide this, we're going to understand how this works. I'm not going to talk about the feedback. So just pretend that this is not here and we're going to start here. So the delay needs to be, uh, we need to specify how much volume we need to send. We want to send to each delay. So you get four, one, two, three, four delays. So right here, this is the volume. So if I play the snare I have right here, which is one single snare, we get the original snare and we don't get a delay. So if I go and go a little bit of volume, we are still not going to hear much because the uh, volume, it's not enough to drive the delay. You know, that's, we almost get nothing. It's very subtle. So once you go and go full volume, you're going to send the whole volume to the delay and we are going to get something. Right. All right. So this is the first, the, the volume. Let's not talk about this. We're going to go to the next one. So on the next one, you get the beat delay or you can use milliseconds, right? Pretty obvious. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check the other video. So on this one, we can select the beats just like we have right here. The thing is that right here, we get a, a visual representation of where we want to play this. And in this one, we have it like this, it's less obvious. So right now it says one, maybe if I put it on four, this means that it's going to go and play it right here on the number four. So if I play this right here, we get the repetition. So pretty cool. If you put six or 16 or whatever, it's going to go and play it on that position. And then at the bottom, we get the same thing that we got on the, uh, on the number one, you can offset the sound. So if I say it's going to play in the number four, and if I offset it, it's going to play a little bit before that. I'm going to play that is, it's like, maybe if I you know, go down on, on tempo, it's, uh, there we go. It's just going right here. All right. So that's what it does. Same as the delay number one. Since we can rush, we can drag just a little bit. I'm gonna go and play it. All right, so it's playing later after the number four. Right, so that's, that's it. Of course, you can go with tempo, just like with any other delay. Then you go to filter. So on filter, you get a low cut and a high cut. You're just applying a little bit of EQing to this by cutting the highs or cutting the lows. So if I go and cut the highs by a lot, and I'm gonna go and cut the lows, of course, we are just chopping the highs and lows. So we get a darker delay, a darker repetition. Right, so pretty simple, right? Just a filter, same thing we get on the cut number one, on the delay number one. So the next level is gonna be the effects, which is, you know, same thing we get right here. We're gonna talk about this later. And then we get the out in the pan. So by default, uh, the sound that is gonna come out is minus six dBs. You don't get full volume. And if we go right here and I play the full volume, we can hear that the, the copy is, you know, not that strong as the, as the first, uh, as the original. It's a little bit lower. And it's because the sound, the, the volume is minus six. If I go and put it zero, which is the maximum you can do right here, the sound's gonna be pretty much the same. All right, pretty simple to understand is one of the, this, uh, this option, we don't get it right here. So it's coming with this uh, delay number four. And then of course you get the panning, all right? So if it go all the way to the left, it's gonna go all the way to the left. So, so far, same, same delay, right? Okay. So now then of course you get uh, all the other goodies, which is gonna be the feedback. So we know that with the delay, we have the feedback. And if I play this, uh, the original one, we're going to get all the copies of the copies of the copies because it's the delay uh, copy feedbacking itself. Right. So, you know, we know. Okay. So on the, on the other delay, we get the same, the exact same, 
but in a different way. The ones in the white are going to be the feedback control, the standard feedback control. The other ones are for a different thing, but the one in, in white are the feedback control. So if I go right here and play it, we're going to play on the Fortnite on the beat number four, and uh, the volume is equal to zero unity. Right. It's very low on tempo. I'm going to go maybe to 100. We're going to get a, something a little bit better. So I'm going to go play it again. Right. And of course, since you have all the delays, now what you can do is to enable all the other delays and play them on different places. That's why we get this delay. So if I go full volume on the other three delays, now we have four copies. I'm going to disable now the, the feedback. So this one is going to play on the number two. This one is going to play on the number five. So we're going to go here and now I'm going to change the colors. This one is going to go and play on the number five. The other one is going to play on the number seven. So it's going to be played here. And the other one is going to play on the number, I don't know, 10. Why not? So it's going to play right here. So now we have four different delays that will create four different repetitions with, the, with their own feedback, and they want to play on very different positions. Let me go start again. Right. So pretty cool, right? And we could easily do this with something better, like a guitar. So I'm going to go and put it on the guitar and disable this one. And we're going to get, of course, the same result. Right. So now, of course, it sounds good, but maybe not that good. So what you can do is you can add a little bit of feedback on all of them. And remember that the first copy, it, it always sounds much uh, higher in volume than the original copy, the feedback copy. So the first copy is going to play harder. So right here, we're going to get the first copy, which is going to sound up in volume, and then the other two. But remember, now we have four delays. And the, on, on each delay, the first copy sounds higher in volume. And that's why you get the volume control. If I put them all on uh, Unity, they're all going to play loud, right? But remember that the feedback, the repetitions will start to fade out. So when we reach to this repetition, the repetitions of the first one, of this one, they're going to start fading. They're going to go higher in volume right here. And they're going to start fading, higher in volume, fading, and then fading. So we're going to get kind of a uh, like a bumping effect. It's going to start like bumping. And I mean the sound, the repetitions. So if I play it. Yeah. So we get that effect, like it's jumping. And it's because the first repetition of each one, or it's uh, higher in volume. Now, if I go a little bit down on the repetitions on the volumes, uh, this effect will not be that obvious, of course. So if I go, maybe I set it to default, I'm going to go play it. Right. So pretty cool. So let me just put them all up back again. Now, of course, we are doing a little bit of feedback. What happens if we do more? We're going to get more of that jumping sound. All right. All right. So pretty cool. Turn it off, turn it back on. So uh, if you remember, uh, let me just bring this here and turn the feedback controls all the way off. Now, if you remember on the uh, on this delay, the, the delay number two has the capability of doing left and right. So if I go, of course, play something, something is going to be played on the left and right. Right. So this one has the CrossFit, which is the ability to send this the copy of this one to the one in the right to get feedback. And of course, if I do something like this, and let me just show you, I'm going to go get some feedback from this one. And we are doing number three, number four, and it's 50%. So if I play now, Right. So we get pretty much that on the left and right. But if I go and crossfed this sound and this sound, the sound of this one is going to be sent to the right to get feedback. And the sound of the, of the right is going to be sent to the left to get feedback. So we're going to get more of this. Right. So that's the effect. Well, okay. So I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to turn this back on. Why am I showing you this? Because now you know, of course, that you have the feedback, the crossfed from this to this and this to this. But now here we have four. And that's why you get four knobs, right? So the feed, the one in the white color is the feedback, the dedicated feedback for the delay. But the other ones is the crossfed. The crossfed that will go to the number two to this one. This one is going to go to this one. And this one is going to go to this one. That's the combination. And that we are just sending the crossfed to all the other delays. 
So if I do add a little bit of uh, feedback, we're gonna get more. So I'm gonna go play it. All right, so pretty cool. Now I'm doing everything from the delay number one, but you can you can uh, select or choose uh, different uh, crossfits. So for example, I'm gonna go to the number one, a little bit from the number two, uh, maybe a little bit from the number four, and then from the number four, I could send to the number one just a little bit, and you're gonna start getting like crazy effects uh, because it's uh, you're sending a lot, right? So the combination for this is just pretty much en endless. So okay, I'm gonna go and maybe turn it off just a little bit. And uh, all right, so that's 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 this control. That is what it means. It's pretty simple. It's just like the delay number two, but you get since you get more delays, you get more controls. That's it. So then you get uh, the feed, the FB effects, the in effects, and the effects. So we know that on this one, we get the FB effects, which is uh, plugins or uh, whatever effects we want to add, and it will just uh, work on top of the uh, the delayed sound. So on this one, we have more choices. So for example, if I go to EQ and bring just an EQ, I can put it on the number one. I'm gonna remove the feedback so we can hearly, we can hearly, we can uh, hear clearly. So this one is gonna play on the number four. And if I just uh, play something, of course, we're not gonna get anything. Just, just a repetition on the number four. Now I'm gonna turn off the volumes on the other ones. I don't need them right now. I'm gonna go turn it on, turn it off. And this one, what it will do, it will just uh, add an EQ uh, to the sound that it's gonna be copied before it gets copied. So as you know, of course, you have the original sound and then this delay will create a copy of that sound. It will send it to the delay. It's gonna get delayed by any, any time. And then the sound eventually will come out with your original or with your copy, right? Or you're gonna get a mix of both. So the, this uh, EQ, since you put it on pre, it will just chop. For example, we can chop the lows and the highs of the sound that it's just about to get delayed. We are not working on top of the original, just on the, on the sound that will get delayed, but this happens before it goes to the delay, all right? This is very important, before it goes to the delay. So if I play it, we get that, but this one was EQ'd before delay. Now the other option you get is to put the delay after it gets feedback. That's why you get it right here. So this one will EQ the thing that comes out of the delay. In this case, since we are used doing something simple, uh, we just, uh, we get uh, something that, which is pretty much the same, I'm noticeable, then we using the pre number one. So then you get the effects. Now the effects, it's pretty much the same, but this one will work on top of everything that will come out. And when I mean everything, I'm talking about all the delays. Because as you notice, you get one for each. So you can use different plugins and get different sounds for each. And this could get really, really crazy. Let's say that I want to use the number one, number two, number three. I'm gonna go send this one to the left and I'm just, you know, doing whatever. And this one is gonna be like this. I'm gonna do a little bit of feedback right here and uh, maybe something like this. I'm gonna send a little bit from here, a little bit from here and a little bit from here, but on top of this, I can add some, you know, some EQs like a flanger or something, something like that. Let me just go to Bitwig and get, I don't know. You can even use a, a different de a delay, whatever. Uh, maybe a filter. Let me do a chorus. So I'm gonna go and send the chorus to the number one. I'm gonna go send uh, distortion to the number two. I'm just, you know, just dropping plugins. And I'm gonna send the flanger to the number three. I don't know what we're gonna get. I'm gonna go and play it. Yeah, super weird. And on top of that, you can use uh, you can use automation. So if you think about it, this this delay, it's super cool. You can do a bunch of things, get get a lot of sounds because you get a lot of control, right? Now something that you don't get with the other delays. Now of course this is depends on what you want to do. If you want to get a simple delay, a simple sound, why bothering using the delay number four? Right? Why using having this power to do something simple? But maybe you want to play around with the uh, with the sound you get, and you want to do all of this. 
it's nice that you have the you have the chance to to explore sounds with with the, this delay. All right, so we're done. So now that you understand all the parts, this uh, delay uh, is not that hard, right? We are not afraid of this delay anymore because it's really simple to use. The only thing is that you just get more of the same. You can do more things, but the controls are just, uh, they look weird right here. They look challenging. All right, so I hope you had fun. You learned something and now you're not, you're not gonna get afraid uh, of using this delay on your own projects.